With the normal distribution, we can do something called standardizing the, the test statistic. So it's another way of approaching the problems um, to what you saw in the last video. So we know that x bar follows a normal distribution like this, and our z value is calculated by doing um, x bar minus the mean divided by the standard deviation of the sample, which is the square root of sigma squared over n. Now the rejection region for z is always the same for a given significance level. So if you have your normal distribution like this, and say for example you want to find do a, a two-tail hypothesis test to a 5% significance level, then the z value you would find for that is always the same. It's this 2.5% on either side, which gives you the z value of minus 1.96 and 1.96. So we can then define the rejection region as um, where the modulus of z is greater than or equal to 1.96 or in other words z is above 1.96 or below minus 1.96. So how does this look in a question? Let's have a look at one. We've got a logic test that's designed for year 9 students um, such that the, it, the score is normally distributed and it has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. That same test is then given to 10 year 13 students and their mean score was 108.5. We want to test at the 5% significance level whether the year 13 performed differently in this test. Now we can approach this exactly the same way we did in the last video but we can also standardise the test statistic um, first and then do it comparing the z values instead. So our null hypothesis is that the mean is 100 and x bar follows the normal distribution like this. Our alternative hypothesis is that it's different, the year 13 performed differently and so it's not equal to 100. So at the 5% significance level our rejection region looks like this. So we have our normal distribution, 5% significance means we put 2.5% on either side which gives us our minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. So the z value has got to be, the modulus of it would be greater than or equal to 1.96. So now we work out our z value where our mean was 108.5 and that comes to 1.792. Now that is not greater than 1.96 so we do not reject the null hypothesis. There's not sufficient evidence to suggest that Year 13 performed differently on this test. Okay, now this next example is taking that same question, but instead of um, testing whether there was a difference on the test, we're going to just change this slightly for a second example. We're going to test whether they perform better in this test. So we're just changing, instead of having it not equal to, our alternative hypothesis says that the mean will be greater than 100. So we're only looking at one tail now, we're testing whether it's better than. So we'll have a 5% at the top there, so our critical value now becomes 1.645. So z has got to be greater than or equal to 1.645. So if we then calculate the z value again, that's not going to change, it's still 1.792 for our mean score of 108.5 but the the test has changed a little so now we will reject um, the null hypothesis because 1.792 is bigger than 1.645 so there is suffic sufficient evidence at this level um, to suggest that year 13 performed better on this test. So you can see how adjusting the question a little and changing the values that you're looking at can actually change the result of whether you accept or reject a null hypothesis. Now this will go on to a little bit uh, in a little bit more detail when we look at the errors that can occur in hypothesis testing.